and they are the ones who lifted me. And that was the second day I was inside that place. They told me that that place is the one called the SIU Tocha Chambers. Bachita Echiyumba Bo Mundomo. The Arab was so friendly to me and other captives within. I found out there were so many journalists within that place. And I want to categorically talk about one person of the Voice of Africa called Katende. Yeah, he was so friendly to me because they looked after me since that I was unable to sit, I was unable to stand, and all that they would be lifting me. They would be bringing me stuff where I can urinate from. They told me that those people have one meal a day of posh and beans. And uh, in the morning they would be given porridge. Since I was so sullen with blood all over me, all over my mouth, this, this person they called Arapi within that place could keep for me a cup of porridge which I would take in the evening when it is cold and that's what I would feed on the whole day. But they told me, the captives within, that there is what they call interrogation. And interrogation included insults, beating, and you'd be put in a separate room. You're slashed, you're given a lot of strokes. They told me all that. I felt so bad because I told them what I've already passed through. Those captives also told me that many of them were also taken to that same white basement where they were also tortured from. I remember one Ossi in that place, whom they called Ossi, the captives. He's by the names uh, Walugembe. They called him they call him Musa. I remember she she used to hand to hand me over to a man he called to SJ. And on the third day, that man when he told me that Zake you're right here, but I want, we want us to make a deal that you'll be resting for six hours and you'll be beaten for 30 minutes. And he asked me, do you agree to S.J. Hamdan speaking? At least I know the voice, even when I don't know how he looks like. But I know the voice. He has kind of... I need to be a little bit of a voice. Interested in your and Kabe wa family yangu, kabe mchala wangu, kabe tata wangu, kabe mtu yena yena yeno ba banga mbati, banga mbati, nenda kuba, banga mbati nenda kuba sinka no mtu, nimba baza mtu choyo, nibanga mbati kona lebo muiro, ba. In Metsabo, bands trouble in your bumming up a gabam, temu, temu, temu numia. Do not please hurt me. Neban Stula, Gabam Quatina Mubanga, as if Ganing and Gabirak stretch about Quatanga Puanji. Neban Quata Naya Tracy Jenga Gamba, ah, go so look tambula, go so look tambula, wakeoza, Tracy Joe Yunga Wangamba, or so look tambula, wakeoza Muleke, Muleke. Neban be bo Abasibabo, Basibaba Nanke. They used to feel pity of me and they never listened to him. But Nabagamba, he actually told them that to put me in a van, it was still a part, uh, 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 it was still uh, 
a patrol car, double cabin. So, Mr. Tracy used to force me to sit, yet I never really was able, I was never able to sit because of the numbness on my legs, even the hands. Actually, up to now, some of these fingers, they are still numb. It was very painful. He was telling me he was taking me to see Honorable Mwiru, but on the way, he told me that, Zake, if you think this is just a joking matter, there is someone who wants to talk to you. And he told me that was President Museveni. On the other side, I had a backing voice. Why don't you quit politics and concentrate on your father's business? I did not respond uh, because I was feeling so much pain because I was being forced to sit within that car. And I was feeling so much pain, I did not concentrate to hear whether the voice really belonged to Museveni or not. And I maybe I thought these are some of their techniques of torture. Or maybe it may be true. I don't know. There was from the torture chambers up to the place where he took me, it was about five minutes. And uh, reaching there, he got out, dragged me out, still forcing me to, to walk something which I was unable. The people who helped him at least to lift me by the hands in the air to take me, they made me lie on the table, just like how you saw in the court of Mitiana within their offices. They told me that that is the SIU offices. So the SIU offices within Honorable Mill came, a glimpse at me, Honorable Mill, I heard him say, this is impossible. It cannot be. Is this a member of parliament? No, 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 no. Officers, please, this person needs medication. Honorable Mill realized that my lips were very, they were like wounded and I, they appeared so dry. And he told me, I think your sugar levels must be so low. You need something. She went out and came back with drinks. Trust me, the drink he gave me felt like splash something. I think it was the most ever tasteful thing I've ever had on planet Earth at that moment. I felt somehow, somehow, a little relieved. I told him the whole story about what happened to me from the time I came there. She was listening in silence, thinking that maybe I was alone. After telling him all that story, he was told to go away. Then maybe I thought, these people have come back. When Bombiron going away, I told him, please, when Bombiron, do not leave me here. Please make sure you do something. At least, please make sure whatever I've told you, you tell to Honorable Chagulani and other leaders. Honorable was like, okay, it's okay, let me do my best, but it has not been easy for me to reach here because even other colleagues are outside, I've not been allowed to enter inside here. That person, Prince J, I'm done, backed at me and told me, Zake, you're going to regret the reason as to why you've told whatever we've done to you to Honorable Mwiru. I felt so scared. I thought this boy are not listening to me since the place was very quiet as I was telling everything to Honorable Mwiru. I thought they were not there. They told me you're going to face it rough because we made an agreement that I'm going to beat you for 30 minutes as you rest for six hours. Mr. Presidge forced me to make a statement, something I refused, which added me more punches 
around my body, around my head, and everywhere. He told me you must make a statement. You must make it. You must make it. I was like, please, I need a lawyer to make a statement. Like you will. He forced me. He was like, if you don't, you're not making a statement, I'm going to write it myself. He's going to write it himself. That's what he said. I've had when he's turning pages, scratching around with something I felt like as if he's writing. After some 30 minutes, he told me, yeah, I'm now done. You're going to sign. I was like, please, please, if you've done that, you've done that by yourself, not me. He kicked and slapped me again. After some time, she left those things. Of the, he didn't make me sign, he didn't make me do anything. She dragged me out. Again, dragging me by the hands, which were so paralyzed, put me again in the waiting, same double cabin patrol car. She took me back where that day they caned me more than they had, were doing before. They caned me a lot, a lot. How I wish I was able to see the poor caning me, but I was unable, but at least I'm sure. Mr. Twist Jehamdan was there because I would hear his voice and I know because he was always I feel you you're listening to the to this. She told me ever again you repeat this story, I will kill you. And will you ever oppose President Museven again? You lose your life. Because here if you are not in agreement with that, we, c we have all rights to take away your life, like how we've done to th those other people should tell you stories. When I went back in the cell, truly these people told me, people with chronic diseases, HIV, heart diseases, and many others, those people would be taken and killed. That's what those people told me. There was a person in that cell whom they used to call a nurse. He would always come to me, but I never always accepted because they told me that the only thing those people gave was Panado. They like, please, I need, I need to be taken to hospital. Please help me take me to hospital. You can do anything to me, but please take me to hospital. She refused while handling me and forcing medication to me something I did not allow. I told her, please, how I wish I would find out your name. You will be prosecuted. She never cared. The fourth day, they told me I'm going to be taken to the hospital. And they told me that I should give them someone's number I gave them my father's number, who communicated to... She told me communicate to Honorable Muiru and those people. I, I found them at uh, that hospital called Iran, Uganda. I found there several colleagues, but these people told me that they were being checked to see that they, are not, they, are, they don't have any recorder, they don't have any phone to take pictures of me. I remember before I was taken I was taken to that hospital while still in Chereka, I was still by that same nurse, I was, they took an injection, I was injected by something, now I believe it must have been steroids, so that my swellings can reduce because they knew other people were going to see me. But the person who saw the clear picture, as I told you before, it is Honorable Muiru. I remember that night is the first time my wife was allowed to see me, but as entering the room where they had put me, and also my personal doctor was there.
they checked me, they examined me and everything. I told them where I feel most of the pain. Those people were so professional, the doctors of your hospital, I want to thank them, they were so professional. Because even when my wife, my wife when she came in, these police officers, they used to be Mr. Tracy J and another one called Okecho. They were in that room, I remember. Because Tracy J introduced, introduced, he told me I want to introduce to you my senior colleague called Okecho. Those people never allowed my wife to see me that very first day. They turned off the lights because I think they were fearing her to break down in tears on seeing my, my face and my body, how it was having the different wounds because they, want, they wanted me to, those things at least first reduce down. Gendalindo gendo was anti tequel steroids, so that even to your weekend era. Era Uradako Naye Bambi Agalanga Nyoku Naza to give me a bed bath. Naye Tebamwa Tebam Kirisangamua privacy. Era Yabany Nyuranga Nyunava Saba Navale Mirako. That priest, I need some privacy. I need some privacy. Mr. Tracy, I need some privacy. Because for her, she was the face of Mr. Tracy J. I need some privacy. Mr. Tracy J refused. He was like, we are supposed to keep in here to see everything. She was such, she was never allowed to be with a phone inside. But they would handle her phone from outside. She was allowed to be talking on phone and uh, she used to tell me that she was in communication with the Honorable Chagulanya and the wife, and they were directing her on what she, should, she, she would be taking care of me and what to do. I remember, I remember one thing, that one time when, they, when she saw that she had no really privacy to bathe me, she was forced to speak in Runyankole. My wife having started from Lukunjiri, she knows the language. Mr. Tracy J, she informed me, my wife informed me that Mr. Tracy J was very happy and said to her that, oh, I'm very happy that you're part of us. Now, you know, what, do you know, Bridget, I want to take you to President Museven so that you leave this shit in Uganda. Amazika Muganda, no. He's taking you nowhere. To get up for Lomuga again, you to quail with Chimuchi Wetaka, to get up with Damukwagala because Ban Tibana was so busy, Kurabanga, but to Jacob Feba Nanyin in say no, Feba Nanyin Uganda, Go Mukufe, to so look quail with Chimucho Yagala. My wife told me that since she wanted help, she just, she just not reply to him because. She knew that the beatings were giving to me because they used to beat me when she's seeing. I feel I want to conclude. The a pathologist to work on my eyes and they were unable to really handle my pain. So they were like, we are going to take you to another hospital. Mr. Tracy J hurried to work with the doctors who put me on a stretcher outside and they handled me so well, those health workers of that place. The nurses were very good. The cleaners and some of these people, even the non-uniformed, the, 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 some of the the junior officers whom they used to live to, to us in the room, they actually told me a secret which I want to open up right here. That is exactly most of the ununiformed people were always surrounding you. Those were SFC people. Era Ahunga Mazo I remember Honorable Segona was there. These people assaulted me while still putting me in their double cabin car. Honorable Seguna objected all of that. 
and he read to them the doctor's referral document and was like, read here. This person they're saying is unable to sit, is unable to do anything. Please help that you, you, you make sure that you get an ambulance. Now um, he wondered that if you're doing all this in my presence, I'm now wondering what will you be do? What have you been doing when I'm not there? So whatever happened at that moment, these guys listened. Never move, never move, Never saw a quang about ambulance. Now go back to win ambulance and solo barretera ambulance. Now come, never move, come ah ah ah. Within some few minutes, they were able to bring an ambulance. From police, from police, informed me by my wife, they put me in that ambulance. Mr. Tracy J, from the Mr. Tracy J was like, Mr. Tracy J is in front. He cannot see us this side, but there was a nurse of that hospital inside there, and also Ms. there was a, 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 a person who was not in uniform. Told to me by my wife, and that person was called Dan. That Dan. I would hear my wife complaining of bad touches by from Dan. So, my wife was telling this officer, you should leave me. The officer was like, you, Dan, you leave me, leave me alone. Like, there's nothing you can do here. They silenced her also by a slap. That was the time they were taking, taking us, thinking that they are taking us to Nsambia Hospital. They just passed through. My wife told me, and the nurse who was inside there, that, hey, this path just passed by this hospital in Sambia. We thought we were going to be this side. They just made sure that they rotate around town. My wife informed me that these people, I think, they are getting to Mitiana for court. So, these people drove at a very terrible speed. They made sure that Honorable Seguna doesn't follow us. Told me by that, by my wife. They drove very fast up to Mitiana Court. I think most of those stories now at the Mitiana Court, then the public domain, please. I think I do not have to repeat all that that happened next. But one thing I remember, that was a, an ambulance driver who came from me, an ambulance driver came, is the one pulled off the IV line and the boat of the med and the, and the cannula, one of the cannulas, and because there were two, one of the cannulas was he removed it with so much violence. He removed it forcefully from me. It pained me so much. They lifted me. Everything I think you saw, it was in the public domain. I don't need to repeat that. But I still, we are still looking for the name of that driver's name. So, these people, I heard that I refused to sign bond papers. And that was Mr. Ochura Martin. I do not think really he's aware what happens in an institution he purports to lead. I do not think he knows what happens there. I want to really, really be thankful of Honorable Chagulani Sentamu and the wife who kept in communication even when he was refused to see me. Honorable Honorable Basadira Thank you so much. Honorable Karanga, thank you so much. I want also to thank my lawyers. And that is this council. Oh, this council. Yes, Elon Kiza. Yes, I want to thank you so much, Council Elon Kiza. I want to thank. Council, Council Marvin, I want to thank the Council Kamia Ibrahim, 
I want also to thank other lawyers from Mitiana and all those people who are able to check on me. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank so much Iran, Uganda Hospital, Honor, oh, Dr. Kato. I want to thank you so much for making a good report and doing everything you really did within the medical ethics. I want to thank where I am right now so much. I want to thank Luwaga Hospital so much. Banage mbeba zanya ba Luwaga, neba zanya ba Iran Uganda, neba zanyo ba Council bona 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 bona, neba zanyo ba member ba Parliament, neba zanyo buli omu yena yena yena. And the unsung hero, my wife. I'm not the hero, she's the hero. She was there for me so much. I want also to thank all Ugandans home here and abroad who were able at least to do something to put pressure that I be released and be displayed to you. Something they never wanted to do because they kept me for weeks. And everything they put on me, the slashes, they are still on my on my bums, the marks. All they did in my chest, they are still there. I'm going to show you all those things. Please, I just can't thank you enough, Ugandans. Thank you so much. I want to inform you about the way forward. I've not informed my really prosecute the same way boss and the semi boss and his deputy. The semi boss is by the names of uh, uh, and Andiho Abel, Kandiho Abel. I informed my lawyers about the, his deputy, that is uh, CK Asimwe. I also told them about Tresje, Tresje Amadan, I also informed them about uh, uh, the same way director is called uh, uh, it's called uh, that same way boss is called uh, that same way boss is called uh, Eli Eli the other name Womanya yes is it I think that is the name, woman. Yes. Okay, see my boss. Yes, my boss. And then also, the SIU commandant. The SIU commandant. I informed my lawyers about the SIU commandant by the names of. Uh, yes, no woman. That is no woman. The same. Yes, the SIU boss. Then this. And then also, I informed them about the name of. Uh, uh, the ambulance driver, actually, I don't know the name as I informed you earlier, but we are still looking for that name. Please, anyone knowing the name of that ambulance, the registration number is 5713. The registration number of that ambulance, that driver, it is, that the registration number is 5713. It was taught to me by my wife. She was able to remember that person. And... Uh, we are still really looking out for several other names so that these people are prosecuted and we want to see them being put. I want them to face the law. Njagala baba teke mukoti, amanyagaba, antwabu, nabateke zizadaba lawyer, semwai bossi, the semwai boss, aba SIU boss, the semwai boss, the deputy and the boss himself, this is my boss that that one about the names I've informed you. Abo na abo na bagay balo ya bangge ba kule che tagisa. O kula banga ba kula ko. Era namba te geza na manyaga ba arapisi na wobe ni 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 kuba they initiated my torture and the arapisi's name I remember it so well I can't forget that name it is Bob Kagalula and also the DPC Mui Muine. Alex Mukono. I remember it so well. Those people have already informed my lawyers. If not today, tomorrow, the case must be locked in very fast. Because I really see these people face the law. I want them to be prosecuted. So I think, comrades, I need to rest. Okay. Um,